Okay. I'll apologize right off the bat for the shaking. I have nerve damage. It gives me constant pain, and it leaves me with the shakes a lot of the time. Uh, I promised somebody I'd try to get this video out to them, so that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, this is my indoor breeding setup. I have a 90-gallon tank that I keep the adults in, a 20-gallon tank, and two 18-gallon totes set up as nursery tanks. Now, those three tanks circulate the exact same water that's in this tank. On the other side, I have three 12-gallon totes that I set up for use as grow beds with an external bell siphon draining down through what uh, I guess you could call a biofilter. It's got some bird netting in it to uh, give surface area for bacteria and then another tote. They're mainly just for the extra space so I don't have floods if the power goes out. The beds can dump a couple times and then everything stops. So, But at any rate, the way everything is plumbed, the feed to the grow beds is a solids lift overflow. If you see the one inch bulkhead come back there and the one inch cap. Now the one inch cap has a whole bunch of holes drilled in the bottom put it center screen that allows uh, basically gravity just sucks water up off the bottom uh, and any solids that are there goes up that tube elbows over to a T now one side of the T sticks up above the surface and is open to outside air so a siphon can't be developed and then the other side drops down goes through the bulkhead fitting that goes out through a ball valve to a line that supplies the water from the tank to the grow beds. Now the other bulkhead fitting was a three-quarter fitting but I've got a reducer in it to half inch. It just goes up and elbows over and I put a pipe with a bunch of holes in it because at one time I had some goldfish in here that were small enough to get into that half inch tube and I didn't want them blocking it up and it's basically just a water level uh, overflow because I have my sump pump running continually so if it pumps more water into the tank then and the level starts to rise above what I want it basically just drops back through that pipe back down to the sump. Uh, I've got one I believe that's a 10 inch bubble bar in the tank and a heater off in the corner and if you can see the return from the sump back there in the back is spread out in a fan shape I did that to help air it as well. Now for breeding purposes, I put a six inch terracotta pot that the male uses as his uh, burrow, bachelor pad, whatever you want to call it, that he tries to get the females to come back to to mate, and some pieces of four inch PVC for the females to hide in. Right now there are no males. I took the male out uh, to halt breeding for a little bit. I didn't want the system to get overcrowded like I had it do at one time. But anyway, like I said, that the one inch drops down through and there's a ball valve back there now that line goes back up elbows over to the grow beds you can see where the half inch comes out and it goes just straight over so it can dump into the sump sorry about the shaking there okay now there's a pump back in this back corner you can't really see it it only sticks down about an inch and a half uh, into the water uh, that way if something weird goes on uh, and water's getting pumped onto the floor or whatever happens that pump will only run until the tank drops down about an inch and a half and then it starts sucking air I'd rather burn the pump up than have it throwing water all over the place so if something goes wrong with this side of the system uh, that's what will happen but at any rate that pump supplies this pipe back here you see the half inch pipe it has holes drilled in it uh, so that the water sprays down into the tank. Uh, it helps a little bit with aeration, although each uh, of these has, nursery tanks has its own air stone as well. But then if you can see back there, you see the screen, sorry about that, over the top of the standpipe. Okay. Uh, each one of these nursery tanks has a standpipe in it Let's see if I can try to close out some of that light. But you can see the screen around the pipe. You see where the pipe goes up to the height that I want the water level to be. And it comes down and elbows out and goes to the hole in the back of the tank. Uh, I use a one inch electrical fittings with a number 18 O-ring for all the penetrations and it works just fine. Uh, I drilled this 20 gallon tank because I already had it. For the other two tanks, like I said, I used totes. 
they're a lot easier to drill they're a lot cheaper than the glass aquariums and they seem to last just as long <laughs> if you take care of them uh, but at any rate you can see all the fry swimming around in there I've got fry in all three of these totes right now which is why I halted breeding but all three of the totes have the same type of drain in them they all have some type of screen or mesh over the top to keep fry from going over the top of the pipe and getting sucked down they all go down to one single drain line that you can't see because it's actually in line with the shelf back there uh, you know that's two by fours with deck board on top to reinforce it and strengthen it this thing came with little three-eighths of an inch particle board shells so I replaced all the shells with deck board and this shelf since I have the three aquariums on it with a lot of weight I reinforced with a little bit of two by as well okay but that's how my tanks are linked water is pumped from the 90 into the nursery tanks circulates through them goes through overflows standpipes down to a drain that sends the water right back to the sump goes from the sump back to the main tank now the benefit of that is since all the nursery tanks are using the exact same water as the main tank well I need to move a female with a brood of eggs in her mouth over all I have to do is grab her dump her in don't have to acclimate or anything it's the exact same water that they're swimming in right now so that's the purpose of joining all the tanks that and for filtration because like I said this is my filter uh, if you can see back there to the back the ball valve coming out of the one inch pipe running along the wall uh, yeah gray PVC I like it because it's actually cheaper than the white and if I need it outside it's UV resistant and it comes with a coupler on one end so but all three of the grow beds have that same setup so I can control the amount of water going in them uh, control the fill rate then all three of them drop down and have their own pipes that run over to what was a junction box for electrical uh, I plugged one of them it had four openings I plugged one three of them I fed in from the three separate grow beds I heated up a piece of four inch PVC and slid down over the top of it and glued that in place drilled a hole in the bottom and added a, the same one inch male and female uh, electrical adapters with the uh, number 18 o-ring there's a standpipe that runs up in and a bell over it to make a bell siphon so it's all three of them are linked to a single external bell siphon which since the grow beds are so small it opened up room in the grow beds uh, plus it allowed me greater freedom with the water flow because I couldn't really slow it down to where I wanted to because of the volume in the individual grow beds and have the siphon start the way I needed it to start so it all comes down elbows over all of my auto siphons go straight to an elbow when they come out uh, they might drop down a few inches but there's always a, a 90 there it just seems to help the siphon start faster then that goes over and dumps into the upper sump or the first sump which is the one that has the bird netting in it as you can see there's three different pipes dropping down in it the one inch is the supply from the three nursery tanks the half inch I'm not sure how well you can see it but there's a half inch back there uh, it's from the tank uh, water level overflow and then the obviously this one is for the uh, bell siphon they go into this sump which has like I said a little bit of bird netting and an air stone in it to help uh, give additional bacteria area to grow I'm not sure if I need it but when I get a lot of fry in there the system can go anaerobic with the amount of uh, waste and solids that are in the water so I'm sure it can't hurt then that just tubes over to this one that has a 400 and something uh, I think it's four something gallon per hour pump in it that pumps back up through that three quarter inch line straight back to the main tank and that is how everything circulates main tank to the grow beds through the auto siphon to the sumps main tank pumped over to the nursery tanks that just drain straight to the sump so all of it eventually gets back to the sump and pumped back to the main tank uh, like I said the, the pump in the sump runs continuously so if the water level starts to get too high I've got the drain built in to drop it back down and keep everything where I want it at I don't have any problems with odor or solids build up or anything else I've never vacuumed out 
the 90 gallon tank. And if you see, there are some solids inside that one piece of uh, PVC. If you look in the other two, there's almost nothing there. I think the algae eater stirs them around, and when the fish go in there and come back out, they stir it around. But if you look around the bottom of the tank, there's just a little bit of gravel I put in there for the males to have something to play with, and no real solids build up. Now in the nursery tanks, I do tend to get a little build up from excess food. If you can see that pile back there, uh, it does the same thing in all three. I think it has to do with the circulation from the water coming in from the pipe above. Angled in, the water kind of loops around just makes a loop so the front stays clear a little bit of debris builds up in the back and every now and then I'll scoop that up throw it out so but that and or will not throw it out I put it on uh, plants outside but that's how my system is plumbed that's how the I linked the nursery tanks in with the main tank so that everything circulating the same water I can move fish from tank to tank to tank without having to uh, get them acclimated or anything like that. Sorry about any shaking. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Feel free to comment. I'll try to respond. I'm not real good at it, so I'm not going to lie and make any promises I'm not going to keep, but I will try. Uh, if it's just a basic comment that doesn't require <laughs> a response, thank you for your comments. Uh, and I, I won't respond, but if you do have questions, go ahead and post and I'll try to keep up with stuff.